I'm John Wilson. Welcome to Owned and Operated. Twice a week, we talk about home service businesses. And if you're a home service entrepreneur, then this is going to be the show for you. We talk about our own business in residential plumbing, HVAC, and electric. And we also talk about business models that we just find interesting. Let's get into it. Okay, today on Owned and Operated, Jack and I follow up on a topic that we talked about, I think two or three months ago, where it was how does AI improve a home service business? And it's been kind of crazy because we talked about all these different ways we thought it could happen. And then as those months unfolded, like some of them have started to work. And the big one that's come out of the woodwork for us has been using AI inside our call center. Um, which I thought was going to be like a year away and it ended up being just a couple months away. So we, today we talk about how we started working with Avoca, which is, uh, a call center AI software to help coach your CSRs and they have a few other products, but that's, that's currently how we use them at the moment. And, um, and we talk about what that sort of forced first 45 to 60 days looks like inside our business. And we talk about, AI in the field. We talk about how it's been happening in our marketing. It's a wide ranging conversation. Um, And Evoke is great. They have a really small team. So I I told Tyson, who's uh, their co-founder, I was like, hey man, like we we mentioned you on the show today. This is really cool. You should give it a listen. And he threw up a promo code. So I I special pricing um, if you check out the link below. So make sure you check that out if you want to talk to Tyson and his team about how Evoca can help out your call center in coaching and in picking up uh, overflow calls, check out the link below and use the code owned O W N E D. Thanks Tyson. Appreciate that. And enjoy the episode. Welcome back to owned and operated with your hosts, Jack. Oh, I want to give myself a badass middle part, but I don't have one on, on, on Jack uh, Q the, the screwdriver car. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, Jack the truck car and yeah. John Wilson. John R22 Wilson. Ooh, that's a good one. See, like I could use something Obsolete. like that. That's uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, John? Dude, uh, it's June. Um, it feels like June, which is nice. It June is definitely Juning. I remember last June. Last year was my least favorite year of all time just so Fair. we're on the same page 2023 was the worst but i remember uh like usually our business picks up midway through april and last year it didn't and then it also didn't pick up in may and it also didn't pick up in june so as you can imagine i was not a happy camper and the phrase that we kept using to ourselves i might have even used it on the show before but it's like this june isn't juning like other junes <laughs> That said, this yeah. June is totally juning, juning like other Junes. Yeah. yeah, and we are we're on June fourth, but we feel pretty good. Yeah, it's a good start. Uh, I think we sold like three quarters of our first week goal, like May or yeah, May thirty thirtieth and thirty first, like right coming yeah. into June. I mean, we're, our goal we're trying to hit ha- half a million dollar months for all yeah. of summer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we're almost at a hundred thousand for the first week. So hundred thousand nice. dollars a week keeps the doctor away. Yeah, as, yeah. as somebody said on on uh, Twitter yeah. the other day. I yeah, think it was my, a day uh, though, or every two my, minutes. My smart ass tweet was a hundred grand a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which Good it times. does. In my, I, b- I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get there, it does. That would, that'd mean the world. Yeah, we're. Um, we're like we're flirting with it, uh, yeah. But we did. We had our first ever two million dollar month in May. That's huge. Which Congrats. that was crazy. You hit it, and we're really excited about that. And then we feel like um, I said this on Twitter too, but like it took us like sixty four years to get to our first million dollar month. <laughs> it took us like nineteen months to get to our two million dollar month, and. Um, I think the 3 million is going to be somewhere between like 12 and 14 months. That's cool. Uh, so we have a ton of momentum and we're, and we're excited. So everyone's feeling good. That's sweet. Yeah. I mean, um, the, you can feel the ramp sometimes. Like, I mean, it's slower when you're like trying yeah. to get there. I think that's why people sometimes say, 
oh, building to 1 million is so much harder than building to 10 million. Mm. But realistically, it's just different problems. I mean, you can feel the momentum, but it doesn't make it any less hard. I mean, your problems just grow and become bigger. There's still momentum behind you, but it, it, yeah. it's not... It's faster, it's not easier, I guess is probably the, the better way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing that I'm enjoying, and it's a two pro it's like a two part problem, like m- the moves you make have greater leverage. Yeah. So like if I have a friend uh who runs like a three or four tech business, and if he made a move on pricing, or if he made a move on like buying materials or like, Hey, I want to launch drain cleaning or, you know, anything Mm -hmm. like the difference would only be like 50 to a hundred grand a year, which is still like as money at, and at that size, that's like a 10 to 15 or whatever percent increase. Um, but like we're doing right now in our drain business, we're, we're making a few moves. We're like adding sewer lining and we're adding another excavation crew and like those two things, which take me roughly the same amount of time as my friend, like changing pricing or whatever, maybe a little bit more. T- like obviously that takes energy, yeah. but like that's going to be four or five million dollars in like still this year. We think you so find you're is, finally like, giving drain move had like more leverage. You're finally giving drain cleaning some love. Like you've been avoiding it's, them for a while, and I now know. you're like, okay, buddy, we're gonna we're I gonna know. next is gonna be septic. You're gonna come back a I couple know. months from now and go septic. Is drains, on the rise. Drains are going to get some love. Well, we, I, I think drain. So, th- and this is like leverage. So, like you make these little, you little or big, you make these moves in a department or in like a a thing, and it it's like moving a mountain with a small lever. So, like with HVAC, we more than doubled their revenue this year. I think we almost will triple it from last year. And like the moves there were a manager, two salespeople, and top grading some technicians. So like we actually only headcount increased only by like four or five people. And we tripled the revenue like from from four million. So it's not like it was like two hundred thousand dollars or something. So it, it is uh, – so we think drains is the same thing as what HVAC was where we're going to take this department, which is like three and a half, four million right now. We're going to – we're adding new install crews. We're adding a new capability with high gross margin, which is lining. And then we're going to basically add marketing dollars and a new sales practice. But like headcount's only going to adjust by like three, four people. And we think it will double or triple. So it, it is – crazy yeah Yeah. but drains is getting some love again we feel like we have a path but see that's the downside so i said there was an upside and the upside is like moves have big leverage the downside moves also have is is like you can ignore a department for a while for whatever reason because maybe you're focusing on the one with the bigger leverage and like yes when you get around to doing drains there's you can unlock five million dollars but then it's also like why like that sucks that we couldn't have unlocked that $5 million two years ago. Like why? Cause it just gets ignored. Like it just is sort of the thing that produces cash. Yeah. I mean, it's a good problem to have. I mean, that it's not really, I don't view that as a terrible downside. I, I view the downside on that being, it's, if you pull the wrong annoying. lever, no, it's an, a, an, it's an annoying problem. Yeah. So like, I'd say it, that. so like with HVAC, I think I, I think I told you about this a week or two ago, but like we started actually charging money on service calls, which like we really weren't good at doing. And that added two million dollars a year of revenue yep. to our to our business. Just like, oh, hey, we should probably charge appropriately for this part. Mm-hmm. Or we should get, you know, two sold hours in an eight hour day. Um so like nothing complicated, nothing groundbreaking. But like, yeah. hey, we should probably cover our payroll. And we added $2 million. (laughs) And so we're just like, so, and so that's annoying because it's like, well, if I just added $2 million, it means I've been losing $2 million Mm -hmm. because I didn't add any, I didn't add a single person to add that money. Yeah. It was just like straight bottom. Well, so, I mean, Tommy Mello, I mean, I don't know if the episode's dropped yet, but he actually talked Mm. about this in pretty deep depth and you'll hear it on the episode. So I'm I'm giving you a little bit of a 
foreshadowing in super cool episode he talks about this he talks about how like as you grow you find these pockets of money just sitting everywhere you look yeah and i mean you just got to pick the biggest ones start going after them one by one and that's where the momentum comes from is you find in these pockets but yeah like we utilized um we're, we're in the process this the last two weeks since we didn't you did the live last week we didn't talk but we started implementing the multiple options and we're really tripling down on yeah options 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 yep so hvac did our first week of required options yeah and their average tickets doubled yep and they're still only sitting at like an average of like 2.1 options and i'm saying guys 3.6 like get it up past three and you're gonna see more increases and then yeah i was able to take that to plumbing and show them be like look proof in the pudding yeah you they had this many jobs Look at this guy. Yeah. He offered the most options. His revenue is the highest. Yeah, his average revenue. ticket's yeah. the highest. Yeah. And then this guy offered 0.68 and needs to go on a pip because mm-hmm. he has the lowest revenue. Yeah. Lowest average ticket, lowest options. So like the all these things we're talking about, the kind of fun part about you and my um, relationship and and the juxtaposition between the sizes of our business is I we get like in real time try these things mm-hmm. and they they work. And it's exciting yeah. how much they work. Yeah, um, totally. Real silver bullets um, hidden throughout yeah. this, this, these talks. Um, and so yeah. we're now doubling down on that again, saying, hey, no, we need to get above three. Two is not yeah. good enough. Three. Yeah. And then on the management side, we are creating those for you and showing you and yeah. and, and training you on like, from the HVAC side, like nobody here sold AC Renew. They don't know what that is. Yeah. Like yeah. that's now an option. Uh, this is the script when you want to sell this. This is like, you can like, you can't have options without having the supplies and then training mm-hmm. people on what these supplies do. So there's, there's a lot behind it, but, um, like it's starting to show and it's starting to produce. It's also yeah. June. So it's like, June. it should go up. Like, let's be real guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, if you up. didn't, if your average tickets didn't go up in the middle of June, we have problems. Yeah. But yeah, we're seeing that across drains and HVAC, which, um, which we think is fun. And it, yeah, it's working. But like basically between both those departments, we basically added 10 grand a day of mm-hmm. revenue, just like straight up 10 grand each, uh, which is good. But it's also like, where in the hell was that revenue <laughs> previously? Yeah. Like, cause then you just like, you try not to do the math of like how much money you lost, like just cause they didn't feel like oh. holding up their end of the bargain. I am an expert at that. I still have my all my real estate spreadsheets when I used to do real oh, yeah. estate. I still have all my Bitcoin spreadsheets from when I ran the Bitcoin mining farm. Yep. And yep. if I continued, I, I extrapolate. I just love the pain of knowing that I missed out on two ginormous opportunities in my yep. life. And if I would have stuck with either one of those, I, we yep. wouldn't be here today. So now this is third time the charm. Oh, we would be here. Just no. in a different here. <laughs> like it'd be eight, it'd be Bitcoin Jack yeah. r- r- having like 16 times as much Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, but not, not the point. Um, anyway, it's good times, pain, pain. pure pain. Uh, the thing we were going to dive into today, we did an episode, um, and it is like, I should, I should re-listen to the whole thing, but we did an episode a couple months ago while I was on a ski trip, which I am ready to go skiing again. Me too. And it was like how AI will get used in your business. And what's been really interesting for us over the past, like, I don't, I don't remember all the different ways, like we thought it could be used. Do you, do you remember them? Yeah. So we, we, we talked about content, which was the obvious one, right? SEO, content, pages. And then that was one focus. And the other focus we talked about was, uh, AI being used as call center, like as the calls come in, AI call center or AI yeah. dispatch yeah. Uh, for service time. And yeah, it's been what, five months and like I'm sitting here going, there's a thousand more applications that AI yeah. is coming out every single day. And yeah. some of these are really cool, but way too expensive for me. So I'm excited to see you try them. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. 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 We've been uh, we've been adding them in. Um, and it is kind of funny cause AI is like, I, it's going to be fascinating to see what it looks like next year yeah. because I think, um, 
right now AI is like it's early adaption, right? It's exactly what you just said. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. I want to see you try. I want I want to see what other people do. And then um, a lot of my peers are using it, or like folks bigger than us are using it. And then what we're hoping is it gives us the edge over over the over the non early adopters. Um, but this is. You know, this is back to I didn't even try to make this link up as well as I accidentally did, but this is back to leverage of like you do this one thing and like because there's it could touch 40 people or 80 people or 100 whatever people like you get so much more leverage from each of these things. So um yeah, one of the so we've been adding in more AI things. So the one yes. I want to talk about today was the call center AI one, which is kind of so fun. You, so you did end up going with it. Yeah. So we're like we're kind of into we're kind of into it here. Um so we we added it in um we added it in like I want to say a month ago. Might have been a month and a half ago. Mm-hmm. We are we are running it. Now there's there's a couple different approaches. So there's like a few product lines that you can add okay. in here. You ready? I, yeah, I'm just like I feel like you're just dancing around it, like spit it no, out. No, like no, what I'm is going. it? I'm just like I'm I'm getting my head. I'm getting you're my building head the story. I'm getting yeah. my head around it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, fr- yeah, friend rec- Rich recommended it to me, so I, I so I looked into it, and uh, so what we there's a couple different product lines. There's a full AI call center, mm-hmm. which to me that's like that's still a little bold. I, Very. I think – well, and we could talk about that. Um, full AI call center. There's a hybrid AI call center, mm-hmm. which is like human-assisted AI. And then there's a coaching program. That's where I want to be. I think the coaching program yes. is probably where the hell is The coaching that. program yeah. is insane. So that's what we've been doing. Um so and I think there's also a web chat. There's a web chat like responder mm-hmm. uh, too. So, um, yeah, it's been really interesting. So, a lot of other folks are using the software, uh, but so what we started with was Coach, and the Coach product. It, it's like, well, one, how, how are you listening to calls now? Manually. Like yeah. we have somebody goes through and listens to a yeah. few different calls Never from each person them, manually. Selectively picks them up. Yeah. Yep. That was ours too. So like we had like VAs like yep, listening to doing. it. Yeah. And like, hey, and it was more like the way we described it was they were doing quantitative, not qualitative. So like, did you do a greet? Yes, no. And it wasn't really like, did mm-hmm. you do the greet? And was the greet good? Um, which is what we're what we're getting now. So we had, I think we had three or four people listening to calls. Like that was their freaking job. Um, and I, our quality was low. We couldn't listen to every calls because there's literally a thousand phone calls a day that go through that call center. So we just couldn't keep up with it. So what this thing does is it listens to everything and you like preset it to like what you want. So like, hey, I want the greeting to be, hey, thanks for calling Wilson. How can I make you smile? Which is ours. Mm-hmm. And then I want, you know, this next step to be empathy. I want this next step to be, you know, whatever. Uh, you can make it flexible. You can make it rigid. Uh, you can make whatever you want. But now I should probably screen share it. I don't know if I can log in here or not, but um, you can literally just listen to every phone call and it pulls out like coachable moments. It pulls out like, hey, here's where we missed. Here's where we so didn't. Cool. It's freaking nuts. It, it really is like insane. And I think um, we're st- they're starting to use it successfully in trainings, mm-hmm. which is exciting because it's now we can listen to every single call and it's like they grade the call. So then you just look look at the worst calls like, yeah. oh, that the grade on that call was like a 30 percent or something. Let's look at that versus the grade on this one was a 70 percent and we booked it. So like we're good to go. Mm-hmm. The thing that we're trying to get them to do now, and they're I think they're about to, is l- they already live integrate with Service Titan, but we're getting them to how do they mark a call as booked or not booked? Because that's a big that's a big problem that we have an issue with of like we don't trust the data 
because yeah, our it's hard to maintain, especially if you can't listen to a thousand calls. It's that really complicated to maintain. It's yeah. really complicated. Um, it just takes a huge manpower versus like, yo, did we book this or not? Like, that's all I really need to know is like our actual book rate. Mm -hmm. But like, depending on who's tags, what, in what way, like we could book 80%, 70% or 95% and book the same quantity of calls. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you foresee like that? That's a, an awesome example of, of the way I think that AI should go. Yeah. I do have a hot take that I want to make sure that we mention here. Oh, dude, give us super hot take. Let's go. Is as the world moves more towards AI on all of these fronts. So, yeah. you know, AI software becomes so amazing for phones and it's indistinguishable and they're perfect. I think it's going to put extended emphasis on in-person sales. So once your emails are pure AI, once your phone calls are all AI, and we know yeah. that because everybody's doing it, having there's so much more yeah. benefit in having a comfort advisor or project manager, whoever, show up at your house and actually sell it to you. Yeah. I think that... Well, I think it'll be is, novel. I think it's like a novel, like... Um, well, experience. I just think when AIs are all competing against each other, right? There's nobody's winning. Yeah. And so it comes back to the salesperson actually mm -hmm. in person at your house. And so this coaching that you mentioned and having that coaching in the field, listening, because I know some states are single party listening. Um, you don't actually have to tell the other person you're recording. Mm -hmm. um, I think single party listening is going to become a huge thing. It's going to become another privacy issue because I think AI is going to be listening to us at all times and coaching yeah. us. Yeah. So, I mean, it's crazy because in my mind, I, I can't, I can't rationalize and wrap my head around like a computer program knowing like what is a coaching moment and uh, other than like, hey, you didn't say X, Y, and Z, but like yeah. understanding tonality and understanding yeah. empathy, well, the, yeah, the, like dude, it's the, crazy, the but it are, does. The notes are crazy because it'll be like, it'll give a summary and it'll be like, hey, so the caller disengaged when you use this phrase yeah. and let, and it's like, what the hell? Like, this is what now granted it's going to help us improve like crazy. So yeah. like, and, and I think, yeah, one, I think I agree. The in-person things can be crazy. And then two, I think this is another leverage thing where one of the things that you see with with scale or that I see. So like we just recruited, um, we just recruited a plumber from a company that has not changed since I bought our company seven years ago, eight years ago, <laughs> which I obviously that's like very difficult for me to comprehend Yeah, as my life has changed so much in that same, same time period. And I think about like how they get leads how they handle call center, how they handle everything. And just like, we are so like, we've continued to make one or 2% changes every day, every week, every month, every whatever. And like now we are, there's such a world of a difference between us and them. It, mm -hmm. to me, this is like one, all of the AI products that are coming out for the early adopters. <clears throat> this is like one more of those things that's like an additional 1%, maybe even 10%. Because like being able to listen to 100% of your phone calls in almost real time and grade and coach right there is like a superpower. Like yeah. that's, that's crazy. I, I fully agree. And I think when it hits the field, it's also going to be crazy. It's, it's crazy now in Dispatch Pro, the way that it's assisting. Like, I think that AI doesn't take over in the way people imagine it taking over. I think instead it becomes a coaching tool that really allows, like, from yeah. step one, person calls in, how are the humans doing <laughs> yeah. as we go through? Like, hey, you should, you dispatch them incorrectly. This person has a, this, a better, you know. Yeah chance of doing this this and this and then the phone calls out and then now the text in the field selling and getting ai coached and now yeah. you know this the lot the whole thing well the this this uh installer uses 20 percent more material than this installer on you know like i think it's gonna become a coaching and a background tool to let us know how we're doing um, yeah but yeah it's gonna be interesting to see i'm, I'm really excited because like i said even in the last five months the 
the amount that of tools that have come out to assist are, are huge. They're, they're absolutely like, it, it's wild how much is out there now. Yeah. I wonder what happens with like, um, pricing or like do the early, do the early movers win? Like do the early movers on call center grading mm -hmm. and coaching and home services win? Cause everyone starts using them or like field coaching. Do they win or, um, I don't know. That's just going to be – because it is like – it's a really interesting moment where there's so much because everyone's pushing in. But when do they start separating and like differentiating? Yeah. And then and then I go into like I, – I continue that train of thought and I think, well, does the homeowner get uh, – do the homeowners get AI too where, you know, you go and you give them a bid and, you, you know, they, they go through – then they send it through their AI system and the AI system says, this price is too high or this price is too low or the salesman, this is a sales pitch. Like it goes through and it tells oh you gosh, like that that funny. the homeowner, what the hell is going on with a tech coming out there and, and trying yeah. to upsell you and like all this, kind, like the anti AI AI. So I, I think the world's going to get a little bit wild here in the future with this stuff because, um, Hey, if anyone wants to do that idea, let me know. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll, we'll go in on it uh yeah. but but uh, we'll, we'll it'll be interesting nails. yeah yeah but yeah we um so we rolled out yeah what else have you guys put in days ago um i mean the big stuff like this has been the biggest so obviously we've touched like marketing has seen a huge impact from ai Mm -hmm. And like how we think about emails, how we think about um, – or even just like review responding, uh, like content. So marketing has seen a really big push from AI and that was probably the most impacted department up until call center four weeks ago. Because before that, it was just yeah. like a tool. Like, oh yeah, okay, I need to make this thing, so I'm going to go click this button. I'm going to go do whatever. I'm going to feed it these inputs, and it's going to spit me out something that I need to edit and then post. But now it's like, yeah, it's deeper. And then we're looking at the options for the field too. Like we, we're checking those out to see what that looks like versus the call center one. Because we do – now that we're running it in call center, um, we're like, holy smokes, this is – impactful yeah. like this is going to change booking rates this is going to make customer experience better like this is going to work and then um on top of that there are come and that's just for the coach thing like i do see a near future where we do have a backup call center that's full ai because mm -hmm. i don't like i think that's like, a great utilization of that weekends nights yeah backup. yeah because it's super easy to program. And, and honestly, when someone's calling at one in the morning, I don't know if they're expecting to get their situation taken care of and you could yeah. design for that. I don't I don't think they really care how it gets taken care of as long yeah. as they've been confirmed. Well, it can direct book into Service Titan. So yeah. like, what are, you, what are you really missing, you know? Th that's what I mean. The only, the only thing I have is when people are under stress, they are not necessarily yeah. um, level-headed and so they want yeah. to talk to a person but that yeah. being said like as long as it's just focused on getting them booked and confirming somebody's coming to help you yeah like i really think um that's a great utilization that's probably where we will implement first so we'll we'll take like our full ai well it yeah. like yeah to me so the full ai call center um it's an interesting so we're going live with like they have a hybrid thing and it's um like human assisted AI. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly how that part works. That's what we're going live with. But Rescue Air, which is around our size down in Texas, they are going live with full AI like next week or week after, which I was like, holy smokes. Because the way I think about the full AI call center backup is it's a backup. It's not like their full call center, but it's the mm -hmm. backup. The way I think about that tool is, or the way I did think about it, was that makes the most sense for like a small shop that can't have 24 seven coverage. But like yeah, now, exactly. now I'm like, okay, I think it just makes sense in general. Uh, yeah. I, I was really surprised by a larger contractor uh, doing that, but 
early adopters. I mean, yeah. like if they're they're going to get a better price, they'll get locked in early. Like it's a win in the long run if it's the right idea and it works. My my worry is the same worry that we run into with like overseas talent is will people respond well to yeah. AI phone you know phone assistance? And yeah. I don't think at the moment they will. Um, until it's like near perfect, I just don't think. We'll, I think people are. Uh, crude creatures that uh Mm -hmm. you know they just they don't like change and they don't like new stuff i know when i get ai um like for chase or wells fargo banking or anything like that always zero 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 talk to a person talk to a person like i don't want to go through your menu i don't want to do i just want to talk to Mm -hmm. someone and so i want i mean i've heard them they're good they sound like people they kind of act there's a slight pause and i think when people get smarter and they pick up on that um you'll run into some issues. Uh, you know, I draw the linear line. It's like, how pe- how do you sell to millennials and Gen Z versus how you sell to boomers is completely different. Yeah. And I think that's what AI will have to delineate is like a boomer I don't think will notice or care maybe. Um, but I think the Gen Z, the newer generations, they're not affected in the same way by ads. I don't think they'll be affected in the same way by AI. They can spot yes. it, they can tell, and they can... Um, you know, choose if they like it or not. Yeah. No, I think you're probably right. I think, yeah, most people like literally won't notice, (laughs) which, uh, which kind of is interesting, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think John, we um, need to get into AI. There you go. That's the real answer is that's John's next business. Buy an AI company of some sort. It's so crazy. Owned and operated AI. Yeah. Yeah. It's an operator that runs your entire but, uh, business. I mean, large, coach. <laughs> there was, uh, Apex was starting to use, um, like full AI in some of its branches. Yeah. Again, as a backup, I don't think anyone's using a full call center yet, but I do think that happens. I mean, because I, I think realistically the cost savings, like one, it will get good enough mm-hmm. versus like, humans like it will yeah it will outperform a human it'll never take off it'll you know it'll never do all the things that that takes and it will also cost 98 percent less yep than running a call center so i don't know like i don't know when that happens but seeing that they're already like this is already a possibility now and like i think when we talked in february we were like ah maybe by next year and it's like three months later and like it we're ramps. onboarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so maybe in three more months, like, or maybe it's, maybe this is next year. This, it becomes viable to run. Like, I think this is a leverage thing. Like what if you could do a human AI assisted call center, except our team is the humans that like assist and like live onboard and jump into calls if they need help. But instead of needing 20 people, you need three. Four. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's a pure leverage, right? One automation system can handle as many calls as you want. You don't need to ramp up people. Yeah. You don't need to ramp up anything. It's just, yeah. and then it automatically talks to dispatch and automatically dispatches based on yeah. a set of criteria. Like it makes sense from a lo- logic standpoint. We'll just have to see because on the back end, my mind goes, there's where there's always a pendulum swing. There's always a swing yeah. back, right? And yeah. so people in the same way that, Nobody's going out and buying AI art or bought reading AI generated books or listen, yeah. listening to like the artists who are making songs. It's not AI generated yet. Mm-hmm. In the same way, I think people want humans um, for certain things. Yeah. Um, even a, like at the expense of wanting a uh, human interaction. And so that, it'll be interesting. Like I, and then the question is like, well, what if they don't know? And so, well, I mean, I want to test know. out rescue air. Like yeah. I want to try it out. Cause like, I'm kind of nervous about that. I was like, yeah, we're for sure going to do the hybrid option. And then he's like, rescue air is your size. And they just, and I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I, th- I think it is sort of funny. Like we're all obviously looking for the next thing. So everyone went from like American to Philippines <laughs> to like, Oh, what if you don't need wage? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, 
And I, maybe a better example of this is like robots at McDonald's or something like that. We're like, they got leverage by adding these tools. So instead of needing 20 people in the kitchen, you need three, but those mm-hmm. three people just like hit a lot of buttons with robots. And I think it ends up being the same thing. Like call center yeah. never goes away. It's just that like each person has way more leverage. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's probably the easy answer is that's for sure going to happen no matter what. Yeah. So neat. I'm yeah. excited. Like either yeah. way that it goes, we'll have to do something, but super excited because it's, yeah. it's such vast. Well, amount when of when do you think you start looking into it? Probably end of this year. Yeah. I mean, so the way that I see it, farther along. Well, the way I see it happening is like this weird. um, It's very expensive right now and doesn't work very well. And then it gets better and better, and the price goes down and down and down. Price goes down, and eventually, it's the cheapest option, right? It costs me a thousand bucks a month to have a full CSR team, and it's it's vetted. It does well versus in the beginning, it costs you ten thousand, and it like eh, kind of works well because it's new. it doesn't cost ten thousand now. Like what? No, are, no, what I are you know. At? Okay. No, no, I'm just. This is vast generalities. Is yeah. how things work. Is they start off expensive, and then as you know, the law of Moore's law kicks in. Like it gets better and better over time. Yeah. at half the well, price. Well, th- that's that's what I wonder too, because I think like everything's coming out and everything is so expensive. Um, like we're looking at some of the field options, and they are, they're very expensive, mm-hmm. and. What's been kind of crazy is like, yeah, what does that look like in six months? Because with call center or any of these, um, like there's a lot of competitors coming out of the market for the field one really surprised me. Uh, Like we're trying one out right now, but like there's like five or six viable options for that at the moment. Which and, is crazy, and that's why I'm wondering, like, who who wins, and how how does that impact pricing, and how does that impact all that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody. I don't think it's like it's like a it's like the computer system or the computer chip, right? Started out super expensive, took up a yeah. whole room, and yeah. then by you know twenty years later, I wonder later, how fast. Yeah, I wonder how fast that will go. I think it's going to go. I mean, look at how fast we've gone from Chat GPT three point two point to like five That can now. Yeah. You run know, call take centers. the take yeah. the bar and run call yeah. centers. So, and it's been like a year, two years. So yeah. I, I don't I don't foresee it taking another year before we we really get good direction on is it going to work? How's it working? And yeah. who's it, who's having success with it and why? Um, so we're going to hang tight for probably six more months, eight more months. But we're yeah. we're going in that direction as well. Yeah, yeah. At least after hours, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Well. Uh, we just covered how we're starting to use AI. I think we'll probably have another one here shortly because we right. we're thinking about doing this in field too. Now that we're seeing the success in the office, so we'll probably be talking about like which one we ended up landing on. We are piloting one right now. I don't want to name it yet, um, but we're piloting one of them out right now. And then uh, basically, once we land, we'll we'll start talking about what that actually looks like. But in the early stages of pilot. It, I'm so excited. Like, it it's cool. Insane. <laughs> like, it is insane. We're not piling it in. And I've seen some stuff, and it's insane. It's, it's so insane. cool. It's insane. Like, and, and this is between this and the call center. It Like, they're both, like, coaching programs. Between this and the call center coaching program, it's like, like, yeah, I think we are going to hit our first $3 million a month relatively quickly. Yeah. Because, like, this is going to really work. Like, it is I don't even know, man. It is insane. Like it listens, it coaches, it points out exactly where you missed, how to do better next time, and the team is bought in. It's like, holy smokes, yeah. this is crazy. Crazy. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited for it, and then I'm excited to ride the coattails. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, it'll be fun. We'll hit our All first right. million month, too. Yeah, when? <laughs> And I said, we will hit our first million dollar month right after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think uh I mean, well we we talked about the field one with Tommy and he said his average ticket almost doubled. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. 
right? Because you, if I could clone myself and send myself out into the field, I'd love to do that. That'd be amazing. Yeah. But there's so many different personalities now that, like, it's very hard yeah. to manage individuals in the field when you don't hear or see how they're Everything, doing yeah. and what they're talking well, about. And I would say the same. It's the same problem with call center. Somebody takes 80 calls a day. How do you? How do you? How do you like really improve that rapidly? Yeah, but at least that's recorded, so you can. Yeah, like there, there's can, a there's yeah. a pathway to be able to listen. Yeah. And yeah. make coaching in the field. There's not like you have numbers. Yeah. yeah. You don't know where they went wrong. You no, don't yeah, know what you're, they're you're, saying. You're coaching by results instead of coaching by like symptoms yeah. or like behaviors. So like, the, and I, I remember, um, that was like a next star thing is like you coaching by behaviors is how you win, not coaching by results. Cause like coaching by behaviors is like, Hey, let's talk about how you effectively listen so that you can offer good options. Coaching by results is, hey, you didn't have three options. I need three options. And then they give you three bad options because they never learned the behavior How to ask of questions effectively and listen. listening. Yeah. yeah. So I think this both of these tools are like they will give you the way to manage by behavior. So you're like – I really – we're really early stages. We're a lot farther along in uh, the call center one, but we're really early stages – on the field one, like I think we're three days in and it has been genuinely insane. Like I'm insane. so excited to hear. Yeah, dude, I'll, I'll send you some screenshots. Yeah, that's sure. awesome. It's crazy. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for listening. Um, make sure you give us a five star review wherever it is that you listen. And also make sure you check out the Facebook group. That's really been popping recently. The Facebook group has been really cool. Yeah. People are asking like, I'm really excited by the – like people are asking good questions, thoughtful questions. Um, I'm enjoying it. There's good like, answers too. Like legitimately yeah. the advice given yeah. in that group has, yeah. has absolutely surprised me. But I mean realistically yeah. you have what? I think I looked today 248, 249. We're, we're 275. We actually add – it's like 10 members a day right now. Oh. Yeah, dude. But, I Like I cool. honestly don't know where they're coming from. And I keep asking Kristen and like, <laughs> nope, no idea, but it's, it's awesome. Like, she I mean, have an idea. I don't know. It, and that's, that's how, like, that's cool. Cause it's, it's something that's legitimately helping that many people that yeah. they've, that it's spreading out and, and it's really yeah. driving value. So if you haven't checked yeah. it out, I definitely would. I keep yeah. referring people there. Um, it, yeah. it's neat. I, I'm, no, I'm excited it, about it's it. It's good. It's been really good. Uh, it's called the plumbing HVAC and electrical business growth hosted by owned and operated. Um, but yeah, it is really good. And I've been, um, what I think has been, I do love Twitter. I love Twitter. Mm -hmm. I love it. I do think what I've been finding is like, I'm spending more of my time on Facebook because I'm finding act like Twitter is really great for like SMB community, which I love. I have so many friends mm -hmm. there. Facebook is the actual people that will move my business forward. And so more of like a lot more of my time is going in like my personal, like I'm reading groups, I'm asking questions, I'm trying to figure out my next thing, which has been like, that's kind of a big shift for me because I yeah. haven't used Facebook since I was literally 15 years old. Yeah, I think what it did is it like SMB Twitter two years ago was very different than it is today. And now yeah. it's a lot of engagement baiting and stuff like that, which don't yeah. get me wrong, I still love I still love yeah. seeing what people are doing. But as the Facebook page is getting a lot of traction in like yeah. questions and actually answers and helping yeah. people out. So really neat. Feel free to join, ask some questions. Um, yeah. We're here to, to help as well. I'm, I'm on there not as much as I should be, but I'm really focusing on, on uh, committing to um, getting on there a little bit more as well. Yeah. No, man, it's good. Cool. Uh, all right, everybody. And make sure you check out own and operate.com. It's a new website and yeah. we're just really proud of it. So, yeah. All right, Thanks, guys. Next week. Thanks for tuning in to Owned and Operated, the podcast for home service entrepreneurs. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like button and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out. You can find me on Twitter at, at Wilson Companies. I'll see you next time.